So, it looks like duos are back. DreamHack just announced they'll be hosting another duo competition starting December 9th. And to get you guys ready, we figured we might as well analyze two of my favorite players, Wander T. Arkram and Extra Reef. These two absolutely killed it in November's DreamHack, getting tons and tons of kills throughout the weekend, many of which were top pros. So we analyzed their engagements and compiled five excellent tips in this video that will help you win more fights in duos. So let's get right into it. Also, we have just released our brand new Clicks Mastery course where Click shows you how he went from grinder to pro and teaches you all the strategies he used to get there. So check out ProGuides.com to get full access today. Also, we are happy to announce we are doing a huge Black Friday sale just for you guys. When you sign up for our membership, get a massive 50% off Pro Coaching, VOD reviews, and this also applies for all services we offer. We highly recommend taking advantage of this while it lasts. Use promo code Black Friday to get started. Also, we just launched our brand new gaming channel where we cover everything esports related, so be sure to check that out. All right, so tip number one is probably one of the most beneficial things you can do to win fights in duos, and that's choosing the right angle of attack. Now, the right angle depends on the circumstances, but in most instances, an angle opposite of where your duo is attacking tends to work best, as it can confuse your opponent, make them panic, and makes it a lot easier to find openings. So, in Re and Arkham's case, Ark would usually be the one picking the first angle since he was generally calling the shots, and he'd be the first in the fight. And then Reet would follow suit by coming in, sometimes even late, which would work out and then pressure from a different angle, either an opposing wall on the same floor or the pieces from above. And in most cases, this really worked out in their favor, allowing them to take pieces or even sneak through builds they otherwise wouldn't be able to. Now, the only times they'd push together from the same angle would be if there wasn't easy access to another side, and if they did, they usually communicated to hold a piece. This is a classic duo strategy. One player shoots out builds while another holds. What's important though is that you communicate where you're going and what you're going to do. So if you're gonna go behind your opponent, say you're going behind so your teammate knows. This is really important, especially for duos that are new to playing with each other as your chemistry together might not be fully built up yet. So if you think this is something you struggle with, I definitely recommend VOD reviewing lost fights. That way, you can get a better idea of what beneficial angles you might have not seen in the moment, and that'll help you come up with ideas and prepare you for the next time. Okay, so angles of attack are essential, but before you actually get in the fight, you've got to make sure you pick them wisely too. When Re and Ark played the open qualifiers, they basically pushed everyone they saw, which makes sense given how insane they are. But once they hit semis and the skill gap decreased, they slowed down the aggressiveness and worked more on taking only the fights where they had a strong starting advantage. For example, in this clip, Re and Arkram hear a nearby rift get popped, and from what we can tell, Ark absolutely loves shooting at rifters. It's a bit risky, but he knows it's a fantastic opportunity to deal damage, which can be huge for getting kills, especially if the rifters are cocky and try to land on you. So they call out which target to focus, which you should always do, and end up cracking the guy's shields. So in this case, the enemy team lands on our duo, and of course, our duo takes the fight. I mean, why wouldn't they? They just dealt a bunch of damage and cracked shields, which is the kind of advantage you want to start a fight with. And even though Reek gets beamed, he eventually goes on to sneak in late, picks up the first kill, and then Arkram cleans up the second. And, and these two were top pro players they killed, Wafishi and Koop. This just goes to show how fundamental your opening advantage is when taking fights. In terms of alternate advantages to look for, the other times they'd always go for a fight is whenever there was a third party opportunity. This isn't anything new when it comes to picking fights, but compared to solos, third partying fights is a lot more rewarding in team mode since there's a decent chance you show up and players are already knocked or eliminated, potentially making it an easy 2v1. And in most cases, it netted our duo easy points. So when picking fights, first make sure the zone isn't very far or that you have a rotation method ready like cars or rifts and if the zone isn't far third party what you can you won't win every fight but if you're confident in your fighting skills you'll come out on top in most and it's definitely worth the risk lastly always be on the lookout for opening damage especially against rifters or other rotators since that can be a huge thing when it comes to shifting the fight in your favor 
But moving on, we can't mention Reet and Ark without talking about peace control. And more specifically, what helped them win a lot of fights was their preemptive peace control, which is basically placing builds in advance to not only protect yourself, but to control more of the fight and prevent your opponents from making certain moves. Now, this concept doesn't really pertain to duos, still, it does help because Ark and Reet are so good at defensively setting up peace control they can play more independently of each other, which can help a ton when finding alternate angles of attack. For example, they come across two players bush camping in opens, and while Reet probably didn't need to do any of this to win the fight, look at how defensive his peace control is. He walls while ramping up or when turning corners, he places cones after wall edits, he gets floor control, and so on. And these opponents are only trying to land shots, so they end up absolutely getting denied by all these builds. Reet just has total command over the fight every second, and it's because he's basically running an edit course on this guy. But don't worry, if you're not cracked, it doesn't have to be that complicated. For example, take a look at what Arkham does here when going to take this guy's wall. Instead of just one cone at his feet like most of us would do, he places a couple more to the left and an extra wall. Boom! Really simple and really useful, because with just those extra builds, should the enemy build out that way, Art can respond quickly with his own wall edit into a shot. So if there's one thing from this video where you should head into creative practice, it's preemptive peace control. Even if it's something simple like Arkham's method, it's so important to do because if you get control of the builds first, you won't get peace controlled, which will keep you a lot safer and help you find more kill opportunities. Coming up are even more ways to find kills. But first, if you're on that Warzone grind too, don't forget to check out our new Call of Duty Cold War channel by clicking up here for the latest tips and tricks straight from the pros. All right, moving on. Have you ever found yourself and your duo partners in shambles when going into the end game and don't really know what to do? Well, that's where knowing how to find impact frags comes in handy. Like, take a look here. It's the tail end of the mid game and Reet and Ark are in shambles because of a really lousy start. Reet's low on mats, he has gray weapons, and they hardly have any utility. But lucky for them, Arkham has shockwave, so they set up a box one tile away, Reet gets in the corner, Ark shockwaves the wall, and it sends Reet flying in. He lasers the heck out of them, and just like that, our duo gets the loot they need to stay in the game, which actually ended up causing them to finish in fourth, which gets them a ton of points. To us, this was the most critical risk they took all event, and it paid off in spades, just because they weren't afraid to go for the kills they needed. However, there's always a risk forcing fights like this where you don't have a strong starting advantage. So if it wasn't for them being nearly out of mats, they probably would have just ignored these guys and focused on their rotations. But in summary, the next time you find yourself in need of mats or utility when heading into the endgame, consider forcing an impact kill. This is where cheesy items like crash pads or shockwaves come in real handy. We saw it with our duo a few times and it really helped them get kills in situations where it really mattered. Alright, for this last tip, have you ever been in a situation where you and your duo knocked one player only for the remaining guy to just keep building up forever and ever? Yeah, we all have, but when it had happened to Reet and Ark, Ark usually just called for Reed to knock down the builds, which isn't a new strategy or anything, but it's so effective at ending fights quickly because there really isn't a great way for that player to counter it. Like sure, you could just build fight, but against competent players who know how to crank, you're really not going to take height without putting yourself in big trouble. Not only because of the player you're battling, but also because of potential third parties and because you might run out of mats entirely. So honestly, anytime you're in a build paddle that goes too high up and you don't think you can win it easily, tell your teammate on the ground to break it all down. Communication is really vital here though. The one build battling needs to agree and whoever is doing the breaking needs to give a short warning just a second or two before it all comes down so that the person on top can drop down safely. Okay, so to recap real quick, in most cases, it's more beneficial to attack from different angles, either different walls or one player being on top, one player being on bottom, that sort of thing. And unless you feel like you're way better than the players in your lobby, you need to be careful about which fights you initiate. Generally, you want a starting advantage like health, high ground, positioning, or even just being the third party. Then there's preemptive peace control, where you place builds in advance that you don't necessarily need. It's not meant to box players in, but more so to gain control in a fight and play a bit more defensively. Next, if you're in shambles going into the endgame, it's often worth it to force fights, and if you have items that can fling you into your opponent's box, that's when you'd want to bust them out. Lastly, anytime a 2v1 build battle goes too far, communicate breaking the builds so that you can end the fight quickly. 
All right, Pro Guides fam, that's it for today's video. I really enjoyed watching Reet and Arkham play together, and I really hope that they duo up again. Reet's been killing it lately too, so you guys think it's time for us to do his story? Let us know in the comments and make sure you're subscribed to not miss out on it. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out our brand new Call of Duty channel too. That's it for me guys, have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.